Today, we're just coming in to talk to Charlie to go over some of the data that we captured a couple of days ago. Um, basically, we did a shoe efficiency test from a metabolic perspective, but also a mechanical perspective. The game of inch is a game of like seconds and a couple of minutes. So it's like, you gotta figure out what shoe you're gonna respond to the best. So for me, it was like, you know, do I want the aggressiveness of that plate on this shoe? Or kind of the lightweight comfortability of this shoe. So if I reached out to these guys to, uh, you know, kind of help me figure out which one was gonna suit me best at really world record 100K pace. Yeah. So the difference is about 2%, but just to put it into perspective, like obviously 545 pace is a little bit faster than six hours for 100K, but yeah. just to say if you were to do a six hour duration, yeah. it saves you about seven minutes and 21 seconds yeah. wearing one super shoe versus the other super shoe, yeah. which is about uh, seven seconds per mile. So basically like you'd have to run like 538 pace in the fast R to have the equivalent uh, time of what you'd be running in the DV8 nitro. Yeah. Like it's saving you that much. You can expect easily four to seven minutes benefit from wearing the DV8 Elite 3 compared to the fast R2. Yeah. Over 100K at that pace. Uh, I also kind of delve into the RER. So basically what this is, is the ratio of fat to carbs. Yeah. Again, I took out the first rep, similar to that one, um, which leads you to RER of 0.85. This means that you're basically exactly burning 50% carbs, 50% fat, just to stay at equilibrium yeah. and not have to use your carb reserves. Um, that's kind of what you got to do. Yeah. Not to say that you have to, but the closer that you can get to that number, the more glycogen you're going to save in your muscles, yeah. the less that you're going to really feel that fatigue, yeah. muscularly at least. Yeah. Um, from an energy standpoint in the last two hours. Yeah. Right? And moving here, metabolic efficiency. So like this metric is basically the amount of oxygen you're using to travel one meter at a time. Yeah. Um, based on your body weight. And um, you, want, you want it to be lower. Yes. Okay. The lower the, lower the metric, the better the efficiency. Um, so you're basically using less oxygen per kilogram of your body weight to move one meter. That's like basically what that unit is. This one right here stays the same. It's an uh, impact loading rate, so it's basically how much force you're taking through your body okay. between the two shoes. Pretty similar. But we do see an increase in like spring stiffness, which is kind of what Gus was talking about before. It's basically a measure of like how much energy you're getting from it, like your elasticity of your muscles and like how much bounce that you're getting from the shoe. Yeah. So it's, uh, it's better in the DV8 Elite 3. Um, also, your ground contact time is a little shorter, which means you're spending less time on the ground. Yep. Which means that you're like, same thing, you're more elastic, you're more efficient, you're spending less time on the ground, more time in the air. And then VO is vertical oscillation. So just the amount that you're bouncing up and down rather than using that energy to move forward uh, a little bit better in the DBA LA3. And it's like, these are like small differences, right? But over the course of six hours. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> like it definitely didn't make a difference. Yeah, that's the course of 30 minutes. Right, exactly. Um, and different reps, yeah. yeah. Um, and then the other thing that we saw was you're actually more stable and, or at least like balanced between your two legs in the DV Elite 3 versus the Fast R Nitro Elite 2. So you have these benefits, which point to greater efficiency in the DV Elite 3, which matches up with the metabolic stuff that I just showed you. Yep. Look like given all the data, other data that I just showed you, yep. is that this digression wouldn't be as much. Yep. You'd see less of a a decrease in leg yeah. and stiffness over time. Yep. And this is like a really big metric for you to train, yeah. or at least like when you're looking at data in your stride and yeah. things like that, especially for <laughs> like 100K yeah. world records and stuff, is like making sure this metric doesn't drift that much. Yep. Because the longer that you can go with this metric not drifting, the more efficient you are for a longer period of time. Yeah. Like that's like a good metric of like showing yeah. like the durability of your legs over time. Being able to like really hit that last six miles of marathon or whatever it may be. Yep. Being able to verify this with mechanical stuff, it's got like two sides of the coin, yeah. right? Yep. So you're like, you know for sure. Yeah. Like you, you don't even need to think about it. I'm gonna say you yeah. just grab them and go. Yeah, and that was the thing too. I was just in my head over it. Like, I'm, right. I don't know which one. Like I've had good workouts involved. Right. It's like, and it's funny when you came in, I was like, pick the, pick what do you think? And you're like, ah, uh, maybe the, yeah. you know what I mean? And it's just like, that's like a seven minute choice. Yeah. <laughs> you know, initially the goal was, let's go break six hours and five minutes, 35 seconds. That's a current world record. Now it's like, can I be the first person to break six hours? You know, like let's 
take a chunk out of this now. Um, and having like the data from Stride allows me to like be like, okay, in you know right now based off the results, this shoe it will connect probably you know a seven minute difference. Thank you, Stride.